Right, in my last video on the Chinese mini lathe, I showed how to make this um, pallet to hold a angle plate and the front half of this um, Myford milling slide, vertical milling slide, um, taking off this back part here and bolting this um, section directly onto the angle plate um, to make the most rigid setup for this Chinese mini lathe. And now you can see a new setup I've done. I've used the complete Myford vertical milling slide and bolted it directly onto the same pallet that I made for the angle plate. And this is a great setup. It's turned out much better than I thought it would and much more rigid than I thought it would be. And now I can make use of the milling slide's um, swivels and do various types of angle work. And having done this setup, I reckon this is actually the best smelling slide you can get for this lathe. Um, you can get the genuine Myford ones, but this is a copy and it's very good quality. And if you watched that last video I did on the Chinese mini lathe milling setup, you'll see that I got this um, milling slide from Kronos and this milling vise. And I got this um, piece of plate that's already cut to size. 10 mil thick I got that on eBay and all you have to do basically is to drill and tap the holes in the correct positions and deburr the um, edges of the plate and it took me a bit of time to work out the optimum positions of those screw thread holes to get the maximum travel of the cross slide and clearance at the front here but if you follow these um, simple instructions in this video you too can have this um, set up a first time. So on this um, vertical milling slide you have two swivels and you undo these nuts here to actually swivel it that way like I've got it at the moment or these two nuts here to swivel the whole assembly around and it makes it very versatile and you can get some good angle work. And both um, swivels are clearly marked, um, nicely engraved. I don't know how accurate they are. I've never tried it for accuracy. Um, but they're nice deep engravings, um, something that won't wear off easily. And you have the um, engraving around this one here. And around the base here. So to square the slide up to the actual chuck, I don't use the... Um, markings around the base here on zero I actually um, square the uh, milling vise on the end of the jaws or use this one here which is a stop from a bench here put that in the jaws bring this um, vise up uh, nice and square touching the face and then do the nuts up at the back and then it'd be dead square and obviously after setting it do these nuts up nice and tight so to give a good demonstration, I've got a piece of 316 stainless steel bar in the vise. I've got a 10 mil HSS um, four flute cutter or end mill. And um, I've moved it in 10 thou to take a 10 thou cut. And um, I've locked the um, gib on the um, milling slide that's something I always do if it's staying in one um, position and I've got the Chinese mini lathe set in the low gear and I'm using about 400 rpm
that's cutting really well and it's very rigid I can't see any movement in the um, vertical milling slide at all And you might see I've got a um, DTI clock set onto the carriage um, at the back here so I can actually move it in by 10 though each time and I have to put this um, key under the um, pallet to undo the carriage lock and then move that forward by 10 thou. And that's something I'm going to look into at some point and probably extend the lock so it comes out here and is easy to get to. Plus I hope to get a graduated um, handle for the lead screw um, so I can actually advance the um, carriage uh, very fine like I do on the actual Myford lathe. And there we have a nice cross cut angle, very good finish on it. And I'm very pleased with that um, rigidity of that milling slide. So now I'll show you how I actually modified the um, pallet to accept this one. That one can be set on zero again and lock it up. So in my last video I showed how to get these two um, Allen bolts in the correct position to actually bolt the pallet onto the um, uh, cross slide using the swivel that the compound slide goes on. So you follow that one to get these correct and then because this one has um, holes drilled in it already um, shown in that video to hold the angle plate on with the 8mm studs. I've marked up those um, positions with a X so I don't get mixed up when I'm drilling the new holes or you can actually cover them up with some masking tape. So before you start um, it's best to mark up um, one side of the base plate of the um, milling slide. I put an F there with a letter stamp and a V pointing forwards so I know that this is going to go on in exactly the same position. Often when you get these um, copies of the Myford milling slide you'll find that the holes are not in correct alignment and you need to be putting it on one way every time so you don't get those um, holes out of alignment. So if you want to get it right um, dead on first time if you follow this instruction here this is the most important one and it's for this um, forward stud here um, that's for that one there. It's an 8mm stud. And um, from this side here, it measures 75mm to the centre of the hole. And from the front here, or the chuck side, it's 25mm to the centre of the hole. And that's the optimum position for travel. 
and clearance for the actual um, slide to go down the front. So then I put it on my bench drill and drilled and tapped through nice and square for 8mm. And I cut two pieces of studding to 54mm in length. So the first one would screw in and you screw that down finger tight onto the actual cross slide, no tighter than that. So on the base plate of the milling slide you have these two lugs here and these actually drop into the um, cross slide uh, slots on the MyFord. And obviously you've got to drill two holes in the correct positions to accept those. Firstly you knock those out, you put this in a vise and use a drift and hammer those out. They're quite tight but they do um, come out quite easily. And um, then when they're out you can use the forward marking and drop that one down over the first stud and position that nice and square on there. So then I hold this one nice and square and put a nut on the first stud So it's nice and square on the pallet and just gently lock that one up and then I use a transfer punch to get the second stud hole in the correct position and took the pallet off put it on the bench drill and drilled and tapped that one nice and square I then put both nuts on and locked those up and used a transfer punch, a very close fitting one to get indents for both those two holes. Or you can take this off, um, take the pallet off, put this back on, on the bench drill and drill down through uh, with a 6mm drill right the way through. So just remember each time you take this um, base plate off to put it back in exactly the same position with the um, forward mark. So then I took the whole assembly off again And imagine those holes there would just be the six millimeter from the top again drill down through and open them up to three eighths of an inch 0.375 then put the pins back in the base plate just knock them in with a copper mallet and that one will actually drop into that Oh, like that, it's quite a tight fit. If it is um, very tight, you can actually open up those holes a little bit with a round file. And that's basically it. So the studs go in, screw down finger tight onto the cross slide. The base plate goes on, pointing forward. And you can just tap it into position with a soft mallet and that's nice and tight the vertical milling slide you have this some um, part here that drops down over the studs and 
and then just put those eight millimeter nuts on the top there. Like that. And I leave it just finger tight at this stage. And then I've got my alignment disc that goes into the jaws. And I bring that one up. Square the vise on the face of that one. And then lock up the lock nuts. And you do those fairly tight. And that's it. So I'm actually really pleased with this setup and this milling slide and the fact that I can actually use it on both my Myford lathe and this lathe as well. So in an upcoming video, hopefully next, I'm going to show you how to do this upgrade here, putting extra screws in or adjustment screws onto the gib strip. Um, it makes it much more even. The um, cross slide on this one only had three um, gib adjustment screws, which is not enough. The Myford has a lot more and I've copied that idea onto this one. It makes it much more even to adjust. You don't get any tight spots it's really nice and smooth and there's absolutely no lift at all which is great for milling plus i also have some free movement screws here without a lock nut which i can actually lock the cross slide when i'm doing vertical milling